August 9, 2023, to order. Um, it appears at this point that we need to move Robin up to a voting member this morning. So I'd like to do that. I do believe that if we do that, we now have a quorum. Uh, and hopefully Rick should be here at any moment. So that should make him. things yeah. as well. I hear Rick's speaking. There he is. I charted my signature. And I'm off to the island. Yeah. We just see where the tables are. Where the tables go. Our first item on the agenda this morning is the review of minutes of July 12, 2023. Is there any comments, concerns, changes to the minutes? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please say aye, or uh, under these circumstances, I guess, is it possible to do a roll call? Because I can't see anything except the um, uh, the agenda yeah. at this point. Right, Alan Paul? Yes. Marvin Gates? Yes. Peter? Yes. Uh, Rachel? I don't vote. Robin? Yes. Portia, he's yes. not voting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job, but we have all yeses, Alan. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, the one thing I'll just make a general comment, um, because I am really not able to see what's happening in the room, I am going to ask Rick this morning that if he sees people who want to discuss a particular item, if he would actually call on them as I am not gonna be able to see that people are wanting to be in the discussion. So Rick, if you would do that, I'd appreciate it. You know, the, sec the second item that we have today is to review and discuss the recommendations to the Ordinance Committee, Chapter 405B, Site Plan Requirements and Commercial Design Standards, Merger Update, draft ordinance landscape requirements and i'll turn it over to autumn all righty so you have if you don't have a, a paper copy i do have some available with the latest a color version and then the clean black and white if anybody needs one they're on the table um so the color coded we'll just kind of go through this quickly and then get to where we left off to make sure i captured everything that we changed last time the um highlighted section is what was changed from last time. So this first part, I took a bit of this um, redundant language off in the purpose statement uh, under applicability. And just, I'll go through this pretty quickly. So stop me if you have any questions. Under applicability, I added the subdivision process to have a cross-reference for that. Took off the, um, some language that kind of read a little strange structures and areas for parking and vehicular or pe pedestrian use didn't really flow with the, the Senate. So that's just more of a correction I saw. And then the landscape it required as part of the subdivision process should also adhere, I rolled that up with the first word to make it simpler. So then we get into the general standards um, and this on page two added, for our general standards added this note that invasive species are prohibited. So it's very clear, even though we say it, it's up there in multiple parts. So for minimum landscaping required, this all stayed the same, except added some language that um, each development shall provide at least two different species and no more than 50% of all trees for development should be of the same species. Um, the standard applies only to trees being planted to meet the requirements, not to your existing trees. This came up um, planning board Monday. I was I was so wishing that we had some of the draft ordinances for several <laughs> several draft ordinances on my desk right now for planning board Monday. Um, but this came up, and I wanted to 
there may be some opportunity too if we have some buffer when we get to the buffer yard section to really talk about what kind of trees are required. Maybe and I, we touch on it a bit, but it came up Monday uh, and it was a good point. And then also added this language about ground cover. So ground cover is required. Any landscape area that's not planted with trees and shrubs must be planted in ground cover plants, which may include grasses uh, and mulch has to be confined. So at least we get, so we don't get to this free form. We get a plant, a plant, and then weeds in between. So the idea is for some. I think you're just missing an is. Ground cover is required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, otherwise it's, just, it, it, otherwise it's not conforming to how you're writing sentences for the rest of the I got you. I have a question on usually when you're talking about ground cover, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just mulch, it's uh, low flowing, low growing plants. Right. I, have we got enough in the plant list? I think we have a good start. I will also <laughs> add that um, so we have we have grasses and then we have ground cover. I will add that I've sent this straight out to a landscape architect here locally and then asked her to do have a peer review on professional you know, main landscape architects. I've got some concerns about our plant list and some different things. So I wanted just to have that um, that feedback. So there were some concerns about, I think, the way the plant list was originally written. She had not seen what we had added. There's some flexibility. Um, so I think that will help us with our plant list too, Rachel. Okay, um, since, since we've done that, could you ask her to perhaps opine on what might happen over the next few years in terms of climate change? Because we know the deciduous forests are moving north as the climate changes. The ground covers and small shrubs, they, they have a short lifespan, but mm -hmm. as we're putting trees in with a 20 and 30 year lifespan, are we really thinking about what happens in 30 years? Are, are they going to be able to survive some of the changes? Gotcha. Well, and disease resistance. Yeah. 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 So, so, so that to take a look at not percent elms, you're probably. Yeah. Not just the, the, not just the variety, but what's <clears throat> going to happen in 25 years. Sure. Yeah. Because that's what, as I said, that's what we're looking at in terms of life lifespan for those. Sure. And and this is something making sure we have at least two species. So huge problem in Texas. Um, we're live oak crazy there, but all of our live oaks are dying. So in thirty years we won't have forests, and you know, the whole country won't have trees. And so it's just this monoculture that's right. important not to repeat. If right. you get an right. opportunity. So yeah, I think that's good, and I'll definitely uh, ask them to weigh in on that too. Who's the landscape architect? Uh, with Sebago, and then she has a good um, network of others too. So, <clears throat> and not to say that we'll. She's usually representing development. Um, she's excited to know that we're defining what we want. So Is she in the contracted? I'm sorry. Is she contracted with the town to do this review? No, no. She's just um, has a good. Um, Network, I think that's sort of. Um, is there a uh, professional organization like uh, in engineering? We have American mm -hmm. Society of Civil Engineers. Is there a, a, a professional affiliation that she's she could maybe tap into? Yeah, that's what she said. She okay. was going to do for okay. her landscape architect group. Good. Yeah, so because they're licensed and uh, yeah, getting into that, not just her. Good. Uh, well, it supports development. Yeah, too. and so we can have that because I think once I get this through all you and get the ordinance committee, that'll be the question: how to how to get feel about this? Because it's a big change, you know, being more prescriptive and having mm -hmm. specific requirements. Um, so it'll be good feedback. I don't suspect it'll be. I think most of the feedback I suspect will be pretty positive about adding maybe some species or maybe some insight on this species is pretty, but it doesn't go here; it'll die. Mm -hmm. Into the sandy soils, that kind of thing. Or what about putting uh, again, kind of to Rachel's comment, something about, and this list will be reviewed on a five-year basis, or some, you know, something. Oh, yeah. Sort of that. Right. Data. Right. right. Data. Let's add it so we that as we know more, or as like say Emerald ash borers expand sure. or their territory, or other uh, get some sort of pest issues that come in that we didn't know about. So let's see, we'll keep going for you. And then we're back to the buffer yard. And this is for the streetscape buffer yard. We had some conversation last time 
about this um, the buffer yard depth. Again, this is the purple is already defined in our zoning ordinance. Uh, we did I did add um, that stormwater treatment areas cannot be located in this front yard buffer strip. <laughs> So, because it's the front, right? So the front is designed to be attractive, and we didn't want we want the storm water to be on the side. And this is from Angela, our manager. But you also don't want uh, road runoff, road runoffs, and that kind of thing from winter, which would if mm -hmm. it's on front, it's going to be exposed to. I like how you said this is from Angela. It's <laughs> <laughs> a challenge here because we've been talking a lot. We're, we have other ordinances that you are going to get to see in September um, that are dealing where stormwater treatment can go and how LID and how we can do it. Um, I'm just thinking of really mm -hmm. amazing stormwater features, you know, like rain gardens and other things like that that we may want to um feature or raise visibility around is there sure. a potential for a waiver in sure. case those things come in okay that's fair yeah okay we have a waiver uh, opportunity for another kind of a town engineer okay. waiver i think that might make sense uh, my only question here um was on the um for the uh route one has a 25 foot buffer in the business office research district uh -huh. and a 15 foot buffer in all other ones is what's the logic there i, I don't know couldn't tell you gotcha. I, it, I mean, I would, to be honest, it's just maybe probably done in silos over the years, and so I would kind of say make it make it fifteen feet. Then it's fifteen feet for the entire Route One quarter, which kind of makes sense. So, so you're taking basically five feet of developable mm -hmm. strip away from all streets. Is that what I'm hearing? Then no, he's wanting to make Route One. One section has 25 feet, and, he's, and then one other section has 15 feet, and then so narrowing it down, okay. so it's 15 feet along Route One. So all but one oh. section of Route One has 15 feet. That's a 15 foot buffer. Okay. And then there's the one. It's like, why does that one have a different? Yeah, buffer? and it's not mm -hmm. a big area. Okay. So it seems like we should harmonize Route One. <laughs> yeah, even <if, if>, um, <clears throat> all of the current buildings keep whatever they've got. There's not a lot yeah. of yeah. building no, right, space exactly. left They're on not, Route One, but we might as well. Yeah. Try to oh, you're in B3, aren't you? General Business District. I was looking down at the bottom for all other districts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, right along Route 1, you have the BOR District, which was down where Main Med is. Mm -hmm. That has a 25-foot buffer also. Um, not that there's probably going to be a lot of build out there, but I'm not sure that we want to change that to 10 just due to the size of buildings, et cetera. That could be well, right there 10. along that stretch. Not to 10, it's just to harmonize it with the 15 feet that's for the rest of the length of Route 1. So I don't I don't want to bring it down to 10. Um, and it could be that if that's the only part we're worried about, and partially that is also where the intersection of the 295 um, uh, on-ramp and Route 1 kind of come together. So maybe we do want more of a buffer in that area because of the, the higher speed traffic and the merge there. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to go back uh, when some of this stuff might've been changed actually by um, the previous comprehensive plan, Rick may know or remember, but I believe that there was, uh, we wanted the addition additional buffering in that area for you know for a very similar reason peter yeah the fact that it's 25 feet i don't remember why but i presumably there was a good reason for that i guess yeah i, I was gonna say a little concerned about changing it without it pops out as an odd one because yeah, the right. rest of the route is 15 but if there was an actual rationale then sure whatever i don't think it was a mistake is what i'm saying no. gotcha. it must have been a yeah. reason for that and Maybe because it's the intersection that, yeah. that probably the, makes the cutoff, you know, and it's connectors. probably. Can we pull up the map on that? Uh, I'll look at it, and yeah, it, it could be it could be too. because of main DOT. That might make sense. Yeah, yep. that could You're be right. too. Yeah. So let's. I'll put a question. Yeah, put a question mark on that one here. Yeah. So then. 
I did add some clarification. Um, I think Peter pointed this out. I had some language that said street trees and large trees, so I just made it all large trees for the with required buffer. And then trees may be planted in irregular groupings to accommodate utility conflicts. I might also add that it's not just utility conflicts or some just sort of creative place around complexity. Yeah, complexity. Just, okay, yeah. So you don't have to have them all regular, right. but they can be. They don't have to march down the street. Right, right. And I think that's okay. Yeah. Because that's... we are not, we have so many existing trees, it's more fluid than that. Actually, we want to encourage the forestry plantation of. Right. So, yeah. I will say that my visit to Western Mass, even my 15 year old, when we went through a lot of small towns and big towns and places, she's like, oh, what really makes this lovely are there trees everywhere, even in the downtown, you know, these buildings up close, sidewalks. Get this beautiful tree and the shade. I mean, I'm excited to get this in place because I think it's important. Did, did you get to Western Mass by the Mohawk <coughs> Trail? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes forever, but it does yes. take forever. Yes, some, but that's how we some have. lovely rural towns there. Yeah. That, yeah. The tree canopy yeah. over time makes a huge difference. Huge, yeah. a sheet reflect yep. huge difference mm -hmm. for so for heat transfer. Um, yeah, I nerded out on her quite a bit. I've got some pictures of some You're doing it right great pervious <laughs> pavement and some architecture for our next standards. So, yeah. Well, let's see. So then I took out the guiding growth and public improvements on Route 1 because we don't use it. Um, we have, okay, so buffer yard residential adjacency. So this is when you have your commercial or your multifamily uses against um, commercial coming in. So we had changed it last time from non-residential uses adjacent to multifamily. Uh, it's 15 feet now, the same as for single family. And then multifamily uses adjacent to single family. We added this from last time, so five feet. But why? I, I thought we were going to. I thought we we're going to go to 10 feet there for multifamily. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No problem. Because otherwise, you know, the residentials are looking sure. at a blank wall or staring apartment. into somebody else's right. window yes. in the apartment. Yeah. Change that part. Yeah. And then so now we're in um, parking lot landscaping. Removed the uh, preservation for the parking, the trees and parking areas. We had some discussion about that. Um, hmm. Removed the vegetated berm for parking landscaping so we didn't get the hills. And this is the parking area. So this is behind that streetscape buffer. Um, I have a sort of a general question, I guess, and, and it may be kind of controversial. Um, cause I know Angela has been trying to do it, but, uh, there's definitely some pushback with public works and then there's some pushback with DEP as well. But the whole, <clears throat> one of the other reasons that we like to have a buffer is for, to try to get some type of infiltration. Mm -hmm. And if most of these landscaped, um, areas, both in parking lots and along roadways are raised mm -hmm. in, you know, the only way you can get some, any type of drainage is if you do curb and gutter type thing. Right instead of trying to <clears throat> sort of manage the sheet flow. Mm -hmm. And I can understand, you know, why DEP wouldn't want that because you get vehicle <laughs> fluids and salts and right. things like that going underground kind of a thing. Um, but in Scarborough, we are with this crazy weather, um, you know, all the, the rain and things like that, we may need, you know, that extra sort of, sort of storage and ability to infiltrate. So. Is there anything in here that encourages sort of that type of infiltration or sheet flow versus the point source curving gutter? So we have, um, we have included an extra, so I think it works with what's coming next. I okay. think I've been trying to make sure that this ordinance will go hand in hand with our LID requirements. So, and Angela, we're we're constantly talking about making mm -hmm. sure we're not creating this yeah. this situation where it contradicts what we're going to do next month. And, and I guess that it's a push pull. Yeah, and so point. I 
I think I'm kind of excited about the landscape ordinance because we've added that additional buffer around the parking lot. So we've got that extra space that you can do those stormwater features and more infiltration. And I think, I think we're going to be okay with that. I think it's a good marriage between the two, between the aesthetic mm -hmm. and acknowledging that we have low impact development standards coming requirements, mm -hmm. frankly, coming pretty soon too. That can work hand in hand, and I think um, I think we're in good shape. Okay. With that said, I, but I also um, will say that if we find that we need to tweak something to make sure that low impact development standards work and that the stormwater requirements work, we definitely can do that. Okay. So it's not a bubble; it's not a silo. You know, it's it's a pretty small staff, so we're always yeah <laughs> together. But doesn't the site plan ordinance and the, don't the site plan ordinance and the subdivision ordinance separately deal with drainage related matters. They do. Subdivision refers back to things. So we're not running into inconsistencies. No, no. There's a lot there. Subdivision That's is really Rob's point is good. Is really very weak. And so actually um in the site plan ordinance, uh, we're working on an environmental standards for wetland buffers. And then it'll go to subdivision, it'll cross reference. And then we're also working on the low impact development standards. And that'll be in site plan that references subdivision. Just the fact that we have you here so, and you can keep that whole grid of all the requirements. It's madness, place, right? Exactly. But it's it's yeah. really exciting too, because yeah. I can kind of see it all good. sort of it's puzzles and making sure yeah. they all go together. I think we're in really good shape. I wish that we were about six months ahead, mm -hmm. but we're not. So, <laughs> and this isn't a one and done type sure. situation. We can always go back iteratively after we do. Definitely that. learning okay. processes, and and I think what's great about where we are with the town and the council is it the our council has been really receptive to us. We need to change this because of this. Okay. We there's and, a lot of um, and and what I'm trying to starting to try to do on the planning board um when people come with something that's not particularly acceptable um i'm in terms of landscaping and usually it's the islands uh, in a parking lot um i'm suggesting they work with the staff and i inform them that we are looking at new standards and perhaps those standards they could use those standards we can't make them, mm -hmm. but perhaps they could consider those standards as reaching into the future nice. uh, and as a, as a way to build their construction now. So the development community is basically put on notice. Mm -hmm. That, as, that, as that it's coming and they have a chance to mm -hmm. kind of choose if yeah. they want to okay. or use this as a guidance okay. rather than the old stuff. That's so okay. that's what we did, I did with Allagash after I scolded them. And this is and more specific too. This is gives, much more specific. Which gives which gives really them assistance. A game plan. Right. right. They they know it's going to be acceptable. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. why I think it'll be positive for the development community and yeah, engineers right. and the landscape architects because yeah. they can look at it and go, this is what's required. Yeah, absolutely. We can do, you know, and put it yeah, in at the beginning. Right. It's harder <laughs> to sort of try what they want to do and then find out midway. Second, no, yes. you gotta add some more. And then it's more cost. And mm -hmm. I think it's it's better to be upfront with what the city the town. Agreed. And and we can phase in these new standards mm -hmm. um, if the developer wishes. Otherwise, they just go back to the crapshoot whether we like it or not. Right. Right. And in staff meetings or pre-application mm -hmm. meetings, you guys are stressing that mm -hmm. as well. And it always makes me happy when planning board backs us up. Yeah. <laughs> like we told you. We told you. <laughs> Good job. Yes. yes. Have well, they been back to you about the pad? No, not yet. I'm Looks like that one all takes some thinking. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So then we parking lot landscaping. Okay, so this is where we added um, the 10 foot for the vehicular use areas. So they have to be screened on all sides, on all abutting property. Uh, and we changed this from five feet to 10 feet. So now we have this 10 foot buffer required. So no more parking up to your lot line. Where are you? Um, oh, page six at the top. Okay. So, and this is where we put stormwater treatment maybe located in these areas upon approval by the town engineer. And that's the same kind of language I'll add back. And then, um, 
in addition, this is for foundation landscaping. So this is around the building. Uh, we originally had excluding the rear facade, but we removed that. Um, so you have to do the landscaping around. And shrubs, these small ornamental trees. We had a situation um, this week that we actually used a bit. We had a tree requirement, but it wasn't going to be able to be planted because of utilities. So we had them switch them out for four or five gallon shrubs. So that seemed to be a fair exchange. Is this captured in here that, you know, they can do something different? We have with this, staff approval or we have, approval. the only thing I have like that right now is that an ornamental tree may be planted in the planting strip and substituted um, where you have this is for foundation. Okay. But I don't have anything like that anywhere else, I don't believe. But I can look into that. There's an opportunity for substitutions. Mm -hmm. Maybe in when we talk about the size of trees and I, I, I just don't want it to have unintended consequences sure, though either sure. with yeah. people trying to trade vegetation with you. And yeah, and are. yeah, and I think so. I came from a community that had extremely hard to meet landscaping requirements, but we had substitutions, and so I have lots and lots of substitutions. Right. These are not extremely hard to achieve, um, so I was a little less concerned about. Give me the substitutions because we have some flexibility where you can plant things and so I think we're gonna be okay. But and the table that you re refer to on the found the last green paragraph there, is that the the, the plantings list? <clears throat> it's it's a table um it's in the table that tells you what you have to include on your plan. Okay. I just haven't formatted it, so yep. I just I'll call it a table yep. at some point when once we get done and format it for the ordinance. Always, if I start um, doing too much formatting, the word gets really tricky, especially in this color coded version. <laughs> so then we get into screening for service and mechanical areas, and added this language. Uh, we have refuse containers or disposal area to be screened from view by placement of solid wood or vinyl fence or masonry walls, tall of the refuse containers, but no less than five feet. Um, and then we added this language that they located to the side or rear of the sites and in no instance should be located in the front setback. So I will say that, um, I don't know, Rachel, if you've been able to see it, LaPlante Electric Helm on Route 1 has been sort of the bane of my existence for the last few months because of some neighbor complaints, but their um, dumpster enclosure is quite lovely. Yeah. <laughs> they got there. They did it. Exactly. They did their vinyl gates. It's very nice. I'm going to make you a, an example, a child of what you can do. And where, where is LaPlante? Uh, is it's down Queens Drive. Queens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. By the shaker furniture. Yeah. Really close to the. I remember the old the complaints. They yes. they come yes. to us frequently. I get those once a week. Why do you say front setback? Uh, you so just mean front. No, nope, the front setback. You can, so you could have a dumpster. So if the in the front. No. As long as it's not in the front setback. Yeah, so the front setback by zoning, and so if this is the twenty foot front setback, no dumpster here. So you can still have your most. Okay. So you could have your dumpster here. But but in no instance can it be in that front yard setback because that's defined by zoning district. So that's why I said it that way. And then it is, um, so if in this instance you didn't have your building on your front yard setback, but you had it moved back, you would have to move your dumpster back too. So it can't be in front of the building. So you could have a dumpster on any side of the building Provided that if it's in the front, it has to be moved further back to the setback. Would it be clear to just say just, refuse containers and disposal areas shall be located to the side or rear of buildings instead of sites? Well, so what I, like what what I'm just not clear. I am. Yeah, I, no, no, I'm thinking of the, something. The green, the green language throws me off. You don't, a, we don't want to cut the plane of the setback, even if it, for instance, goes across a parking lot. So Dunstan Court, mm -hmm. that new building that I think 
just got a certificate, uh -huh. at least for ground floor. Um, the refuse container is on the side across the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Does it cut the plane of the setback? I don't think so. Okay, so that's 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 so even if it's on the side, yes, don't want it to be within 10 feet, 15, whatever the whatever the setback is. Right. In right. other words, they can't right. play once it's they once can't. it's across something. Yeah. But you still have to be able to get a truck in there to sure. access it. So that lends a little complexity sometimes as far as site layout. But alas, the green additional language is intended to put a qualifier on where the dumpster could be located if it's in the front of the building. Can't be in the front of the building. It's, right. it's just extra, like don't even try it. Well, why don't you just say and not in the front, period? Well, Front of what? The building. Okay, so front of building. Well, of well I don't want to. Yeah, but if 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 I it's a play, it reads now. I'm reading it to say you can have a refuse container and disposal areas on any side of the building, except that if it's in the front, it has it can't be in the center. Right. That's the way you intended to read. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if you have, um, see, I I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I agree Friend. with Autumn either. I, I I understand what Rick is saying. I'm even questioning if it shouldn't be as clear as no refuge container can be in the front of the building, nor can it be in any setback area. Okay. That, that's the intention that it's side or rear of the site and then but it can't, so here's, okay, I think we have one on Route 1 that's an example. They have, it's on the side, but it's in the front setback. So they put their dumpster on the side. So it's just extra language. So, okay, it's on the side of the site, but it's in the front. And so the front setback kicks it back. So it's at least level with the building as the intention of this language. So if I have, um, <coughs> does that make sense? We have some existing um, structures on Route 1 that their building makes the setback, but the dumpster is in front and the front yard setback on the side of the lot. And by definition on the corner of any building is an area that's both front and side setback is your point. Mm -hmm. right? So I want the dumpster to be behind the front yard setback at all instances. It can still be on the side. Uh, it has to be screened. Or in the front, as long as it's outside <laughs> the setback. No, it can't. But the front, there isn't, you can't be in the front if it's on, <laughs> By definition, you can't well, be the front because you can't, can't be in the front setback. Well, if the building is set back further than the setback line, it still could directly so be in the front. That's fine. But it but it can't because it says it has to be on the side and uh, the side or rear. Then why do you need the green language at all? If, if the point because is you if, can only have if, a dumpster if, on the side of the rear. It's because of that building, corner on the side. And of the this building. is the 20 foot front setback and this is the building. Yeah. They can put their dumpster right here because it's on the side. That's what the language is for. Yeah, I, so if this I, is the street, they can say, oh, we're just going to put it right there. It's on the side. But, but, it, but I'm saying but it's it has still to in the be. Set. I get it. That's, it's only in this instance, okay. instance, so you can move it back behind that. But it doesn't but it, it, the building at all. Only yeah, what, but it, as long as you keep talking about building, right. then you're not talking about the whole lot and the whole site. Right. So I think Refuse containers and disposal areas should be located to the side or rear of the building and in no instance shall be located in the front setback, just for clarity. Is that okay? Because the side yeah, can be. Well, we I get, get that I argument where I oh, it's just the side. I but, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that works. Okay. Can I ask a weird question? <laughs> on a corner lot, uh -huh. you've got a building on the corner. Does it technically have two fronts? It depends on the zoning district. Some okay. of them, um, some sometimes yes, and sometimes, um, and I don't have them all. No, that's fine. Just, like, just yeah. Sure. Trying to, yeah. So, like, if you were on a corner, your dumpster is going to be in the back corner. Yeah, right? it's actually right. Right. What's what's the front? Sit at the front of all. Yeah, that's kind of my. I, I, I don't know. Two. I think most of those districts have like setbacks from like Route One and setbacks from like Gorham Road. As opposed to like front yeah, I, I, I don't want to bog down the, yeah. the discussion. Just kind of curious <clears throat> if a white person came up with this 
um, building we're describing um, and see the dumpster within the language uh, described that we just arrived at. Would the lay person look at the dumpster and say, oh, it's in the front of the building? Or would they look at it and say, no, it's definitely not in the front of the building? I sense, Marvin, that if, it, if the, the good thing about using the front setback is that by definition, it will therefore be to the side and at least level with the building. Right. So if it poked out in front, you'd say, yeah, it kind of looks like it's in front. But right. if it's level with the building, right. I think it feels like, no, that's on the side. It's yeah. definitely on the side. Okay. Yeah. I, that's what I, was I still it's have a core concept here. And yeah. I still have a question regarding the setback issue. Um, as my understanding of what Autumn just said, would say to me that it's allowed in a side or rear setback, just not in a front setback. Do we okay. want a dumpster in the setback at all? Well, so the, the setback, setback is, I'm sorry, I mean, Alan. Well, no, I'm just, a setback to me <laughs> by definition means there's nothing there. It, that's not though what it means. It's just for the building. So, the parking goes in the setback. So the okay. setbacks are just for the structure. And so what we have added is this additional 10 foot um, buffer setback now. So we've added that, but you can technically, so the set, they're gonna build the building inside of those setbacks. So then what's left is where the parking and your access ways go. Um, so the okay. dumpster will be in a side or rear setback outside okay. of the 10 foot landscape area. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So modify it to be the side or rear of the, the building. building. And yes. Building. Yes. So then we get to outdoor storage. <clears throat> and I put this in from another section in our ordinance. Um, because we, I, I found some more random sections. I even found another random um, buffer section that's a chapter that just has a paragraph. So I'm always trying to flip search and find things to consolidate. But this is language that we already have. But I did take out waste collection facilities and dumpsters because we're treating that separately. So this is really outdoor storage, um, which is the issue we dealt with earlier this year with the um, fleet vehicles? Yeah. Please. Yes, yes. And so fleet vehicles are now different. So we're trying to sort of get to it. And so outdoor storage is only allowed in certain zoning districts. And so that's that first sentence. Uh, and then if it is allowed, these are the requirements for where it goes. And then um, the screening, I didn't add any specific language extra for screening for outdoor storage areas. Because outdoor storage areas is uh, could be like a car lot or mm -hmm. tractor supplies, kayaks, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to add anything, we can. I didn't put a whole lot into this except capturing what we already have. If, is that something like Lowe's has? Is that still their retail, you know, their mm -hmm. landscape area? Is that still part of their building or is that outdoor storage? That's outdoor storage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we want to talk part about part screening all the way around on all sides? Mm -hmm. or? Well, and that's what I was wondering if we wanted to do that or um, leave that one a little bit more subjective for site plan review, because I think it differs so much. Mm -hmm. The car lot versus Lowe's plants versus uh, your mechanical HVAC system. <clears throat> I can't well, agree with that. Yeah. Well, also, the, the when, when it's when, when there's a storage. I'm thinking down uh, at the diner. Um, that storage unit is next to, I think, a residential mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. So should that, if it's next to residential, should that have screening, the storage unit have screening on all sides? If it's an actual storage unit, probably yes. I think that's what I'm struggling with because the out, it's outdoor storage that applies <clears throat> to so many different things um, and we're talking here screening so structural screening defense you know, that sort of thing yeah. it's like I, I know what you're talking about that i wouldn't think that we would necessarily need require landscape screening for that 
because you're up on a hill and you're separated from multifamily behind you by, mm -hmm. by effectively terrain. Um, whereas if we're talking about structural screening, I agree with you. So it might be the planning board may require. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Depending <clears throat> upon, you know, or yeah. however you want to put it, may, may require that. Giving you uh, the right to demand, yeah. Yeah, demand. Giving, giving us the ability to say, in this case, yeah. we and need. I'll, that's a good, because that's sort of what I was intending for that. I think that's a good place for, because they might vary so much. So I'll add that. Yeah. Will, will you please tell me where that is being added? Uh, I'll add it under um, where it says the outside store, the second little paragraph, the outside storage, <laughs> goods, blah, 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 and the light shall be located to the side or rear of sites and screen from view if feasible. And then I'll add the planning board, um, okay. probably add something subject to the review and approval of the planning board. Yeah, because uh, the planning board needs to decide if it's feasible. Yeah. And I think it will depend on the location, what it is. Um, I, I I would suggest the language the planning board may require because I think yeah. that, that makes it you know yes the planning board may actually force you to do something and that's the intent of the, well, the it gives, gives a how about yeah I can yeah. say and screen from view if required by the planning board instead of the if feasible language yeah yeah I think yeah. that yeah. work because mm -hmm. of is that okay? Yeah. Feasible is, a, is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Completely makes that sense. <laughs> <laughs> the recollection is that let's change all automobile vehicles are going to be fall under this category so they're all subject to contract zone contract zone yes mercedes mm -hmm. the land rover the okay. acura that's being built out of every one of them yes. had to go through contract yes. zoning because yes. of that issue yes well it's because the use is not allowed well use but, but then they have to do this too right yeah does the acura dealership actually be built well they're <laughs> they're charging surcharging the site there. Yeah. Well, we were hoping kind of stuff to squeeze out. We originally heard that they were going to start this summer, but now we're first expunge. Well, yeah. don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. I think that's a good clarity. Should have never happened. I have a question about the next paragraph and the word integral. What does that mean? Um, in relationship to what you're saying, I think that it's supposed to sort of match the site, so it's not you know if you have a nice brick and metal um, structure with pretty landscape and you can't just do a concrete block screen ugly. Uh, that's how I take it. This is the existing language. I mean, that's just my interpretation of it. Um, that, that's my interpretation too. It's that, just that supposed to really coordinate. There, there should be some coordination of architecture or landscaping. Or such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there another don't word put up a cinder block. You like better storage than... shed next to it. I don't have a suggestion oh, for a different. I just building. didn't know what it said. Sure. Yeah, it, it makes sense. To, does it, using the word integral in that way makes sense to developers too? Do they get the joke on that? Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah, as long as that's the case, that's cool. I, mean, I agree. But on its surface, it's not all a person will burn, but it, I, I get what you're saying. If they if they don't get it, we'll we'll help. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for synonyms. Um, so then we get to landscape preservation and protection. And I just sort of grabbed a number um, for preservation of native species over 20, oh, this should be 20 inches, not 20 feet. That's a huge step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, We're talking redwoods yeah, there. Yeah, we have those, right? Um, at DBH. And I need to add a definition for the DBH. That's the four and a half feet above ground level. So it's diameter base height. Isn't it diameter at breast height? Breast height. Yes. Thank you. So that's why we're going to add a definition. All right. Is it always four and a half feet above ground? No. No. It's, it's pretty standard four and a half feet. And the, the four and a half. The standard number, but DBA can <laughs> diameter, yeah, right, right. Right. and then you can so your call, I yeah. See. But you can that's a good question. Yeah. But we'll, we'll identify it as a four and a half feet so it's consistent. So tall people don't get bigger, I would get a small, I would get a small, I start choosing the people, right? Sure, exactly. <laughs> Does that seem like a reasonable starting point? And and this is also a place where um, the planning board is kind of jumping ahead uh, in that Allagash 
uh, proposes a tree save area on a lawn. And I've asked them to come back to us with what's in that area. Hmm. In other words, what do, what are the trees, what, what are they saving? So, and again, I think this is still just sort of a, a loose attempt at getting tree preservation. This is the state of Maine. There are strong forestry requirements. So this is still <coughs> wherever practical. And it's not that, it's not the tree preservation yeah. ordinance yet, right? right? So I think right. it's just, that's acknowledging. Mm -hmm. um, we already had specimen tree included. So just giving a little bit more clarity about what we mean by that uh, is all this really attempts to do. And, and it also gives us a handle on, again, on, on kind of what's being saved, because somebody can come and say, well, we're saving the, all of these trees, and you look at them, and basically the size, but it's a bunch of scrap, yeah. a bunch of crap, you know, is it trees that should be saved, or is there a better way to use that area? Or is this just a PR move? Yeah, yeah right. so just a PR. And we are giving them an opportunity if they're saving good trees and landscaping, they can include that in their overall. So that's sort of why I think we need to define it a bit. We may need to define it further if you all think. You are right. Four and a half feet. There you go. <laughs> that's recorded. I, I, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm a, I'm concerned that Rick was doubting. <laughs> okay. I, I, no, no. I'm, it's a it's a it started out as diameter breast height, and I think it got defined. It's still called diameter breast height, but it's yeah. generally measured according to it's up to yeah. four and a half feet. Yeah. I didn't know that. So we'll have standard trees no matter how tall or how short. It looks the at least we'll have the measurement, right? Right. All righty. I actually ran into that many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. I was representing the developer of residential project on Great Diamond Island. And the DEP, among millions of conditions, was the size of the trees. Mm -hmm. And I first saw a DBH. What does that mean? And somebody from I think it was Technics explained it to me. Mm -hmm. But they said, of course, it can vary depending on the height of the person. Now I'm reading, and that's not right. Can we go yeah. back to the, the saving the trees and, mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that they're not saving scrub kind of a thing? Um, when, help me understand, um, when would it be bad to save trees? What we don't know is when they say this is a tree save area, we don't know what's there. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a handle on, But as, what, as we start to think about, uh, sometimes on site development, you have to balance with the preservation, the tree saving and the aesthetics. Agreed. But also thinking further out in low impact development way, you want to maintain the natural hydrology as much as possible. And these deep rooted trees, regardless of their species, may be holding something other than just their species. Mm -hmm. Like their, their, their um, benefit may be more than just that they're scrub in there. So I guess I would, um, I guess what I'm, I, I think what my conflict is, is um, we, why, why, why wouldn't we want to save these? I don't think <laughs> we're saying anything okay. in this to say um, that we're not. And I understand that it could be a whole PR thing. To, yeah, I think you know maybe. What I mean, but. Um, and I don't mean to speak for Rachel, but maybe in the past people have said, oh, we're saving these trees. We don't need to plant landscape island trees and we don't need to do anything else. We have okay. this lovely tree save. And Rachel's point is this lovely tree save is just a bunch of little saplings, yeah. and, which is fine to say, right. but doesn't count towards the other requirements. Right, right. So hopefully. I just want to say that I, their importance is right. not yeah. just the species. And, 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 in this, and in this case and in other cases, sometimes what's being saved uh, has been harvested frequently, uh, in other words, and, and doesn't have anything yet that's growing or, or that's that's going to be tall. It it, uh, it could have been on land that's uh, been so 
The way that um, the way that the cloud right. over and it, it could be habitat. It could be yeah, and, and and that's why what we're asking for, what I was asking for, is tell me what's there. Yeah, right. I mean, what that, what does the inventory look like? So we we you Rachel, don't know it, unless an inventory is done. So. But isn't that part of the first? Don't we have to do a site inventory before they come to sketch not, plan? They do it. Trees. Not for trees. Not for yeah. trees. So we added that so only, they, only for a specimen. So the screen language, Here. if they want to get some credit for their trees, then and they're preserving, they have to actually do it right. Okay. Um, they can't just say we're going to keep them safe and not do yeah. any uh, preservation measures. So we've added that language. So it's uh, we'll get legitimate preservation. And so, so they do not need to do an inventory. Not unless you are. Counting. Planning to count them or preserve trees. Currently, so only your specimen trees on site. Yeah. Right. Alan, this one. She is yeah. to speak. So, Alan. so I just have one question, and I, I was thinking originally of directing it at Rachel, but I want to ask the whole board: if we have an area where a individual is re is requesting a tree save area or something of that nature, why wouldn't we require some kind of a site visit? And then we can do our own verification. I don't think, Alan, I think that's probably a good idea, but I would say that some of those locations are not accessible. Um, in the terms of like Allagash that we're looking at right now, we can't get there reasonably. Um, do, do we have, a, we don't have an arborist. We don't have an arborist. Um, we don't, have a, do we have a, do we have, no. <laughs> it it, it costs money. No. Uh, the note on the whiteboard says hire arborist. Um, yeah. okay. Hire on, on staff or on contract? Uh, either is, way. Is the yeah. issue what trees, or what can and cannot be, or what should be saved? Is that what you're focusing on? No, my focus is don't don't discount them just because mm -hmm. they're scrub or. Uh, they could actually be holding right. habitat sure. yeah. or something, and, and they they could be a refuge for the bats in the summer. Exactly. Yeah, no, here. But, we, but but we don't know. So people will put in a tree save here, uh, and because we've got a tree save here, that takes care of the parking lot. No. What resonated with me is what you said, Rachel. We don't know what's there, right. and my question is, why don't we know what's there? Because we've never asked the applicant to tell us, and that's what I'm saying. Why don't we ask the applicant? And, and, and that's what this now says. Okay. Do an inventory. Okay. Um, and, and specifically in the case of Allagash, they're proposing a tree save area near their main building. Um, and the parking lot curves around it. And then there's a driveway that goes this way uh, and then back to the back of the building. And there's a tree save area in there. And they're not proposing any other landscaping around that driveway. Mm -hmm. um, so what's there? Tell me what's there. Tell me, is it big enough or become big enough to handle the heat sink right. that's, that's created by that asphalt of that driveway? So if this is telling us that we're going to require them to do an inventory, that will answer your question about what to save or not save. Yes, but I would also take it further that that inventory needs to be reviewed by and approved by mm -hmm. staff. Okay. You know, instead yeah. of making it so onerous that they need to get a licensed arborist or a licensed, you know, wetland person, just <clears> do <throat> the inventory, present it to staff for review and approval. Yeah, and, I guess is what and, I, and, what and what the the result may be once we see that inventory and the staff has made a recommendation our yeah. our response may be to the applicant you know this is good glad you're saving it you know I understand what's there but you need to put yeah three more trees along here yeah right. so if so are you saying then if the developer doesn't agree with the staff findings then they can go to the planning board is that what you're saying well they would come to the planning board anyway anyway so I think in other words, the, the staff findings would be in the memo, I assume, mm -hmm. okay. um, from, from the staff okay. and the planning board could look at it and say, okay, this is fine. Or we could say, 
Yeah. Yeah. No, we need. I think we're we getting need some things. more trees here. I think we're getting your stuff, which mm -hmm. is not just clearing it because mm -hmm. it maybe is not mm -hmm. beautiful, but we're also getting the aesthetic. So now we're getting this look of. Um, we want this for stormwater, and that's great. But to Rachel's point, we don't give you credit for right. things this tall and, right. and that are never going to that get are never going to grow. We right. still want the aesthetic yeah. values. I think, I think this is, this is a great combination. Compliment. And yep. then, thank you. I'm used to reviewing tree surveys, right. um, and they're pretty easy. And okay. you circle the good ones, and you're like, "This is what you get credit for. These are great specimen trees." And then, so maybe the planning board can give you some. Um, so, just to jump ahead, we have this big table at the back. Um, and it tells you what you have overall required for trees and shrubs and everything on the side. And, take them off. and so you can take them off. And then if the planning board says, yeah, I think we agree, um, you should get credit for those wow. six wonderful mm -hmm. specimen trees. And you're going to put in tree preservation measures to actually protect them. Mm. Um, okay. Then you're good. And, and, and then if you don't want to, you still don't have to because it is the state of me. And as long as staff is aware that like it's not just the species, the number, the sure. caliber, mm -hmm. it's if there's a, some other sort of like some natural other. areas. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Thank my, you. my last question and the answer, if any, can be very brief. Uh, the term PR was bantered around and I, I know what PR stands for, but I don't understand what it means. You mean the developers are sort of doing something to... Yeah, exactly. They're, they're designating an, an area as a uh, safe tree area when there's there's really not much going on there. There's no habitat being preserved. There's no anything. They're just going to use that and say, hey, we're preserving some ground over here, undeveloped or undisturbed from when we clear the site we have all this open space unfortunately okay. nobody can walk through it or do anything with it because it's all and wet they think that <laughs> and they think they're going to get something in exchange for they, they yeah, credit, that's right. yeah yeah they'll get credit they, 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 currently they, do they get credit for no i think only when they they advertise um how good they are with the, the environment yeah yeah, and the and, planning board tries. I would say not to give them credit, but sometimes they win, right? Because we don't have these rules in place. Okay, so we don't have so this. Will take this, care of that. I think we're. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I think we'll try to. It'll give the planning board the ammunition it needs yeah. to say no. That doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it yeah. gives us we, the we don't deem it to staff yeah. even before it gets to planning board to say no. You don't meet our minimum requirements. Go try again. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, we say thank you very much for the effort. Now we can treat more trees here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. These are all really good. Um, I'm so excited to have these things in place. Um, who knew the the lady from Texas was like I know, right? <laughs> in vain. Um, so then we have site amenities, and this is uh, new site amenities, and then bicycle facilities. Thank you, Portia, for reminding me because um, we have site amenities uh, that's included now in our site plan requirements. And then I added some language about bicycle facilities. Uh, so check these out and make sure we don't want to change or augment these in any way. <clears throat> so this um, one or more bicycle parking spaces for every 20 vehicles is sort of some standard language and just grabbed from some other places. Um, Which is a recommendation from transportation. Mm -hmm. So you're talking just bike racks. Yeah, yeah, just bike racks. Yeah. Yeah. Are we talking about bike racks? Just bike racks. Yeah. 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 Bicycle parking spaces. Bicycle that design standards recommended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they yeah. must follow the standards recommended by the Association of Professional Bicycle Professionals. So that would include that would imply bike racks. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we ought to say that. Yeah. Which yeah. shall include bike racks. I, I, I don't think Instead we need of to. just having a designated place that says bikes no that point here that wouldn't be i wouldn't like because you need a you, okay yeah you need a fixed <laughs> object on which yeah. to bolt the bike which has to be in the ground and has the means to it's not just a stick in the ground because you remove the bike from it, it has to be a circle they have a whole bunch of things that make something a valid place to park a bike can, can i suggest we change spaces to facilities sure yeah i think yeah that, that makes sense a lot more. Well, that's got to have a rack. Gotcha. Yeah, because gotcha. like yeah, a rack is not a space. A rack is <laughs> right. designed that's to have right. multiple <laughs> stuff on it. So. Is, there's no limit on where these facilities can go. 
because well, we're, we're silent on where they right. go. Right. What if they put them in the middle of a sidewalk? You know, they can't they can't necessarily be where we need ADA. Right. Right. Would that need to be put in here? Would, would the location be in the standards for from APBP? Well, I'm thinking like for ADA, that would be covered by the ADA requirements. So I don't want to worry about no, that. I, yeah. I just threw it out there as an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just say the location to be approved yeah. at site plan review. Yeah, that's fine. Because again, I think this is one of those that could go, they're most likely going to be on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Can it go in those buffer areas, the setbacks and all those type of things? Or by the dumpster. The whole point of this is yeah. to a message that people can can go to places on their bikes. No, I don't force so that. should be up front. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, actually, you weren't because that's we had that. Oh, really? We had that sort of request. We had a restaurant that uh, was not happy about having to put in a bike rack. So they put it by the well. That was the so it was right, the Where did it end yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, it ended up kind of along the road to the side of the building. I think it was, if it's the one I think you're talking about, I think it ended up in a pretty decent spot. Okay. But yeah, we they to, they didn't want to. That was kicking and screaming. Gotcha. The site plan review is allowed to not allow petulant placement of. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> Forgive me for being technical and words in but. So if I have a 20 vehicle parking space, mm -hmm. I need to have one place for one bike. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's this ratio. Yep. Okay. If you have 21, do you need to have two? No. We can That's lower the number. Question. We can require a minimum. We can say um we can say bicycle facilities are required for every site if you want. This is just some talking language, right? No. And most and most bike racks usually Drop accommodate a four. Yeah, I was just gonna um so it's only the bike rack the mass at one point five five four, but yeah, yeah. two. Yeah. But I don't think most bike most bike racks, I'm sorry, for they will say, accommodate four. Yeah, four yeah. is your normal. So Unless you just stick a single post in and put a, sure. um, you know, a yeah, right. right around thing. Is that That's something it. that we want to that we want to require bicycle facilities no matter what? Okay, the, the, the single post to the ground with a circle on it gives me two. Right. Um, that's the whole part. Right. That's, is that's 20 one. too high? It's I feel 10. like 20 is too high. I'd say 10. Lower than 10. Goal, the goal is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People ought to provide places for yeah. people to put their bikes. In the yeah, yard. especially with the rise in e bikes. <laughs> might want to, you know, they pick on bikes. And I've harassed my dentist and my doctor. They don't have racks. I, I raised an issue. We don't have any public facilities. We finally got one at the hub and, mm -hmm. and we've got them on order for public safety. Mm -hmm. um, we need to send a signal that yeah. bikes are. How about oh, okay. we? How about we start with the strong signal and just say bicycle facilities yeah. are required at a rate of one per twenty space or yeah. one per ten spaces, mm -hmm. and so they're required. You have to at least provide one per every ten spaces or fractional parking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm right. I'm going to hire you and then, in and your then retirement. And, then, and then we've got to deal with actually taking business. your bike in your hands to get to all. Okay. That's yeah. another committee that's on the 22nd. <laughs> okay. I have so a we'll... question about L side amenities uh -huh. uh, and uh, echoing Rick. Uh, pardon my picking on a single word, but I uh, primary entrance to me means one entrance, and maybe uh, maybe that's why isn't it just entrances? To new and renovated buildings, as opposed to qualifying the entrance. Uh, I, the language used to say major, yeah, I, um, and so I changed it to primary because I think you or you would have service entrances on the back and things like that. It could be public entrances. Maybe public is good. That's I, a, I, I like that. Like a service entrance, I don't think you need. Yeah, that. Right. Is the intent that's to look at medical buildings, and you've got so yeah. many different. Trying to figure out what. I like well, public is great. That's yeah. a good way to. Because 
because that's the point. You want all your public entries to have a place to sit. Yeah, that's great. Is that is that work? Yeah. Good. Yes. So then I'm super excited that we have snow storage provisions <laughs> because we again, didn't have those in Texas. <laughs> they have tumbleweed for Texas. Exactly. Me because when I first got here, I'm like, so, 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 oh, and now I'm like, you don't have enough snow storage on this side. What are you going to do with it? Uh, so it's kind of fun if we get a snow like here, right? Several yeah. years ago. So um, added this language that the areas shall be shown on the site plan to avoid conflicts with landscaping, visibility, drainage, or icing during the winter season. So this is some. Um, this is language that we already have that I found in another section. The right. only thing that occurred to me on this one is that I think it shouldn't block or overlap with site amenities and, and bicycle facilities. Although they can be co-located because they're two different systems, no? No. Do you bike in the winter? Yeah, yeah. people, Some people do. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Yeah. I was seeing that too, but yeah, it's like that thought. Stronger like, stop than the Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so and not and not. and uh, I I really appreciate the bottom uh, bullet. Snow storage areas shall be located to avoid piling of snow against existing trees. Yeah, we had um, an application that had a tree save area next to the parking lot, and it looked as though it had maybe four feet, and it said that was a snow storage area. Well, yeah. that's the example. snow was going to end up in save. that. In and this that is area. one of those. I was like, oh, I need those sure. limits. <laughs> Um, is I see that yeah, well I told them to do it I told them to change it anyway. I see that it says it shall not block drainage areas but if you put oh there it is the next one stormwater treatment areas if you put it on the snow you you're basically short circuiting your stormwater mm -hmm. treatment if you put it there okay never mind got it should physical barriers be mentioned that we the board has typically required so we have that in the wetland specifications okay. Okay. to be uh, to be all right to be <laughs> coming in september all right <laughs> super excited about that i mean i'm thinking of hannaford for example when we have a major storm they just pile sure somewhere on the site not a designated area per se because that's an old site plan yeah. but do they ultimately truck the snow away they, well, what, several years ago, they had to close the airport for a while because the snow was piled so yeah. high from, from, from snow the storage that it was interfering with landing. Right. But it does, that's a good point, because it does take away from their parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the winter, they may not be meeting the parking standards. And we well, have this... Even on the yeah, for early early display, yeah. Yeah. We have this bullet um, that it may be located within parking areas, but such areas may not be counted towards required off-street. Okay. So like if Hanford is going to overpark anyway, yeah. and so they yeah. can designate spaces. I think. Yep. No, the uh, we we had for for Costco. Um, they are overparked. They have you know two. My perspective, a parking lot is too large, but they also designated snow storage near the uh, Payne Road strip of parking, and. I would love to have been able to say, I'm sorry, if that's snow storage and you're planning on using snow storage, then you actually don't need those spaces. So I'm going to challenge the planning board to come up with incentives then for these type of developments because we're going to get more and more of them. Uh, the Costco. So if you're going to go over the, plant, the, the parking space requirement, let's incentivize it. Is there an impact fee that they should be paying? Is there some type of uh, mitigation they need to be doing for the temperature or well, I storm think, water so impacts. I think what we're doing with this is we're giving them the gun to say we're just not going to We're it. slowly getting there, yeah. but the parking standards are such that while we have minimum parking standards, we don't have maximum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. In other words, I can if the maximum becomes the percentage of land that must be left permeable absolutely hey, excuse me please excuse me could i possibly suggest we stay on track we have 20 minutes left i mean i appreciate i don't think we need to go over past planning board projects at this point um and i'd like to kind of move on and finish this for autumn's and uh, staff's thank you. take thank you alan and just so you know parking is coming up before you by the end of the year okay <laughs> Um, so then we get into the approved plant species list. 
And so I added some language to um, just make sure that when the ordinance, this ordinance requires a large tree, that it um, falls back to the correct tree location. And just to make it really clear. And then the, when the ordinance requires a shrub, only plants classified as flowering and ornamental shrubs, perennial ferns and grasses may be used. Um, and then we added um, this section that you can have 25% of the plants for shrubs from an alternative list. I suspect that when we get a little bit of feedback from the landscape architect groups, uh, we might have some additional plants or we might strike some plants, I think that may not work here. Yeah, I, I'd say we defer any comments on the tables here until yeah. we get feedback. So I'm kind of, I'm excited I, about that. Autumn, I have a comment about that section. I'm nitpicking one word you say from the following list. Uh, I think would below be a better word only because there's other information between that comment and the list itself. Otherwise, you're supposed to put a colon there, says the English teacher. Oh, I'll, I'll probably um, add table titles too. Yeah. And so kind of we just move that sentence to the end of that section. So it's right. It, exactly. Out. Either that or move the section to just above the list. Or, okay. number, or number the table. Yeah. Or something. Uh, let's see. So now <clears throat> nothing has changed from this section. I'm not a huge fan on our shrub size definitions. What it's page a, are you on? Do what? what I'm on page uh, 14. So it's this table in the middle about the size. The trees make sense, but the shrubs, this is not common size, um, 24 inches in height. It's more usually by gallon. And so I might tweak this a bit if you all are comfortable, just with some standards. And I think the landscape architects will probably help me with this too. I was gonna say I I, I look for some input from landscape architects yeah. for what's because two year clumps and two year clumps and three inch pots. Three inch pots are probably fine for ground covers, but an 18 inch height, depending on what kind of shrub it is, I'm really comfortable saying go buy a five gallon shrub. And then when we Eric goes out and inspect it, he's like, oh, it's a five gallon shrub. I don't know if Eric's going to measure every shrub to make sure they're 18 inches. You know, I think there's some variation in species. So I don't know. It's job secure here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do like the sentence where the planning board may require. Um, that's the kind of power I like kind of granting the planning board throughout this. So, Robin, that's the point that I was thinking earlier. It's giving, uh, giving uh, uh, the, the uh, Rachel the stick, yeah. if you will, I think is a good thing. Yeah. And uh, not to belabor the point, but I'd like to have, see the carrot come to you. And I think I, I just want to make a couple more points. In addition to landscape architects, I think it's important that we reach out to the landscape contractor community. Mm -hmm. Because uh, even after these are put in, there's a lot of bait and switch happening. I know that I, I looked ahead to guarantee there. Uh, there's bait and switch happening, mainly because, uh, and this is my third point, a lot of these plants won't won't thrive without irrigation. Mm -hmm. And if we're not requiring irrigation in this day and age mm -hmm. and these crazy climates where we go from five to 10 year droughts to mm -hmm. no regular yeah. you know, we can't rely on a, a, a year like this to get us through the other 10 years where yeah. everything's dying off. So I think we need to think long and hard about irrigation. In fact, yeah. the town I work in, we're doing we're piloting in on all city projects. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably a good segue to P because that's where we start to talk about maintenance and, and sort of guarantee. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the part on under guarantee that's yellow that says plants that die must be replaced in kind. Mm -hmm. That's not always possible mm -hmm. because part of the reason the plant's dying there is because it it's doesn't suitable. It doesn't have irrigation or, or it's, because the climate's changed over the past 10 years. Or the canopy has changed. Yeah. It's yeah. in a shade area yeah. now. And or it, there's something even about the soil. Yeah. The tree in yeah. front of our exactly. house has now been replaced three times with the same tree and it keeps dying, which yeah. tells me that is not an appropriate tree to go in that long. <laughs> May I ask why uh, the sentence, the use of bare root plant material is prohibited, is here? We're... It's not a recommended practice. We're up on page oh, 14. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means. Bare root doesn't have a ball. 
No, so mm -hmm. it's not it's, planted with the soil. Yeah, it doesn't have any, it's, not, uh, it's just not a good practice. And this is language that we've had around for a while. They're, they're invasive uh, mm -hmm. species that come in uh, on root galls that mm. are beginning to be understood that the only way to manage them is bare root. Really? Planting. Okay. Uh, and uh, right. unless there's a really strong reason to have that sentence in there <clears throat> going forward in the future, I would to strike it in a sense. Okay. What, what, what we, we could ask the, the landscape the, there's, folks. Yeah, all the out, uh, so there's no dirt yeah. attached to it. It's just yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. And Martin's it, saying it, that it, others, which you've all seen when we plant things, works. little things so sometimes attach yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's a good point. Okay, yeah, you've got definitely. a large caliper tree. You can't. No, you're not. You're talking about shrubs or. Unless there's a really good reason to include that sentence, and I can't think of one, you might not. You might just strike it. And so it can it really so defer yeah. to yeah, the professionals could. and what kind of species and size. I think that's actually a really good point. Right. <clears throat> We're still. I took off the site plan waiver for alternative buffer strip planting adjacent to water bodies and wetlands because this is going to be covered under the wetland. I'm, I skipped ahead to page 17. I know you did. I just wanted to point out. I liked the language in uh, what was the key. Um, so I didn't have any comments on it. So for the record, we didn't get on the line by line of review, but I think it was good. I agree, and yeah. the fact that we are requiring a two-year guarantee is huge. Yep, yeah, agreed. So, so for the record, That's we're good. good. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I like that it, the guarantee period does not begin until all landscaping yeah. has been installed. Yes, yeah. yes. absolutely. Yeah. And then. Portia, did you see your language from last time that it has to be planted within a certain period? Right, of eight right. Months? Yes, thank you for that. Um, Portia <laughs> does a similar thing to six months, but I did sort of the seasonal uh, thing in my brain, mind, and eight months seemed reasonable too, depending on when you got your site plan. Yeah, it, it's, it's more that you've got, you have to step as opposed right. to well, whenever you get around to it. Yeah, and we do have a lot of whenever you get around to it. So a lot of this information is really good, but um, once the site is uh, constructed and they have their CO and they're operating and they meet their two-year plant requirement, and even not so, like, how do we know that they're going to keep, they're going to replace their plants? How are we going to go out and check that? Also, on in the waivers, you know, the snow shall the, on the last page. Snow mm -hmm. shall be hauled to the approved permitted location. How do we know that that they're going to keep going to that location? We don't. I mean, there's, I, don't, right? I think we really don't. And you know, to be honest, we can't always. I mean, we're the planning department, yeah. and then the you know, code enforcement guys. Right. There's three and a half guys there, yeah. and then I mean, so. The best I think we can do at this point is to really get it in good shape when we start and okay. then we have an understanding. But it's if there's a the and then it's a complaint driven, or if I'm driving by and I see a dead tree, I'm gonna tell Brian to send him a letter. Okay. So it's more like okay. I and we okay. have um our fire inspector sort of works that way too. He has people out in the field and enforcement we, can be so enforcement is though. so hard. Yeah. Um we're not extremely proactive mm -hmm. in our it's more complaint driven okay. here. Um I, That's an understatement. No, my, my <laughs> fun, in a fun complaint, one of, I have worked for a proactive code enforcement community before. That was exciting. That was enforcement. We used to call them code enforcement officers versus building officials, two different things, but it's it's going to be eyes on the ground. And, okay. and I can see Alan twitching a bit to get us back on um, track. And so we can have this one other. Um, well, we have we have five more agenda items in roughly <laughs> 10 minutes. Two minutes. Um, so 
is is it are is staff okay right now with the review that I'm, we've just done and we're all set there i'm in really good shape so i if you all are uh comfortable i'd like to make these changes and then what uh, send it back to you all i'd like to get it scheduled for ordinance committee review um Pretty soon. Keep this moving. So, yep. do you all want to have a full agenda item next time, or can we do a review, um, a quick review, and then we'll move it? I think quick review, and I think a lot of the stuff we talked about today was um, let's hear back from the landscape mm -hmm. architect or the landscape mm -hmm. folks. Um, so maybe a summary of that, and then a quick approval okay. when we move forward. Yep. I would. All right, all right. Uh, Eric. Any public online? Uh, no, not at this time. All right. Next item on the agenda is meeting day and time discussion. Uh, there was a lot of emails flying back and forth, and I appreciate everybody's uh, conversations and detail that they provided for availability. Uh, I know that Autumn is doing as much as she can to try to make things happen. It appears that the majority of the people have said they would like to go to the second Friday of the month. Uh, if I am incorrect in making that statement, somebody please say so. Is there any conflicts for anybody on this call for a second Friday uh, of the month meeting? Well, I wanted to make a comment it, even in advance of what you're asking, uh, Alan, and that is the Tuesday in those emails that were flying around. I think I'm responsible for uh, putting the kibosh on Tuesdays. And I have worked with the nonprofit uh, on schedules. And I want to take the kibosh on Tuesdays off the table. Uh, I might may have more flexibility after discussing it with the board, and I'm talking about the other board. Uh, so, and I do not want to be responsible <laughs> as one person to just strike an entire day of the week away. So, uh, I think I I can work around Tuesdays. Uh, so, please add that to the list of possible days we can meet. Okay. Uh, yeah, but but let also let me say that Tuesdays is, is kind of tough for me, yeah. uh, though I'm not a certainly a voting member because the Parks and Conservation Land Board, if it's going to meet, meets on Tuesdays. Okay. So, and I think we we should consider that because that's the voice of the planning committee or the planning board is pretty darn important. Um, I like the Fridays. I think um, the second Friday means we don't get knocked into like the four day holiday or three day weekends and things like that, which I think is, is a real consideration um, uh, for a, a committee that meets 12 months of the year. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think the second Friday is, is a, I, I, would, I would endorse the second Friday. So, so Alan, the only problem um, with moving to Friday is we have to use the public safety building and I am at the whim of their scheduling. The second Friday is not available in September. Uh, the second Friday in November, we're closed for veterans to I have some conflicts with that. I'm also trying to make sure that we can get on their schedule. I've asked the fire chief to see if they normally only schedule that once uh, a month in advance. So I'm asking for some special permission to use it. Um, so if we choose the second, Friday, it works great for 2024, but 2023 might be strange. I'm just right. putting that out there. Um, the first Friday works better for 2023, except for me, uh, and that's okay. Other staff can be here, um, but for 2024, the second Friday works great. So I'm still uh, figuring out the facilities because we can't have the meetings in town hall, so I don't have a lot of flexibility, um, but I can definitely keep along with that charge, but we cannot meet on September 15th in public safety. And the hub is not suitable. The hub? Uh, well, the the, the community lights. said they're out of the same Are they open on Fridays to public? I don't, well, I'll have to check. There's, it's just as an alternative. And, and 
I can always, the library is an alternative if they would let yeah. us book yeah. out. Yeah. You just don't open until nine. They don't open until nine. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm one of the trustees. I can but, but, but the community, the community room, they allow oh, people oh, in that's good earlier. Point. That's what we're talking about. The library. Yeah, we, 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 go, we can go into the community room yeah. without the library but being open. Outside exactly. the door, because it's, yeah, that yeah. door right inside. Yeah. So yeah. if you all tell me a specific day, you really, if you really like Second Fridays, um, 8 to 9 30, then I'll see what I can find. Just understand that we may meet at the library in September in public safety one day. And, okay. Yeah. Second Fridays. Second Fridays. I don't object to it. My, I, 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 via email, I said I. It just doesn't strike me as judicious or some such thing to pick the day when town is closed to me. So uh, it just seems to be an accident ready to happen. That well, said, I can meet it on Friday. <laughs> I, I'm one of the culprits here in the change. Um, I didn't have a conflict until. A month ago, I took the teaching position at law school, and I'm going to be teaching real estate transactions on Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 40 to 10 10. So I can't make meetings on Wednesdays after August 28. So, not that I'm asking you to change so that I can stay on the committee, but if we have to stay on this date, I, I would be. I guess I have to now, Wednesdays have been proven. No, I, I get it. I, there, there doesn't seem to be a perfect but answer. Your here. To yeah. get me off the committee too. <laughs> so, no, seriously, that I, it's been a dream of mine. Friday, 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 Friday. Well, I love Fridays, okay. and I'm right. open to Fridays at different times at different places. Do we need a motion? Probably. Alan, I I don't know that we need a formal motion for this. I think. What we need is is a uh, is, is a uh, uh, I'm not coming up with the word I want here, but consensus, I guess. I don't think we need a formal motion, but consensus is what we really need. And if we can find something where we can all be there, that would be ideal. We don't like want to, suggest, to eliminate anybody. Alan, I'd like to suggest that I think we have a consensus for the second Fridays at 8 a.m. And we have an enormously polite board that is willing to offer everyone else the chance to, to, to air their, their possibilities. But I, I would propose um, in the absence of anything else that we do have said consensus and we can move forward. I'll be there. All right. All right. Okay. I mean, there's always gonna be- And location. One off. Off. We'll, we'll yeah, let you right. know where. <laughs> where, when, where. And yeah. as, as a brief question, which is related to this one, do we um, do we have a full uh, uh, LRPC membership right now? Or are we waiting for anything from the uh, appointments committee? Well, I was going to bring that up, um, and I can tell you that the appointments committee has not met for the last two months. Um, Got it. So we're still behind in re and physically moving either one of the current board members up in the process. Uh, or the appointments committee appointing somebody totally else, which is out of our control. So we are waiting for appointments committee to meet. And then beyond that, we are waiting for town council to approve whoever <laughs> the appointments committee appoints. So yes, we are down one member. Uh, Appreciate the update, Alan, thank you. And Ellen, it's also a possibility moving back to Friday that Ken Johnson might be interested in rescinding his resignation, if that's mm -hmm. something that's possible, because he simply couldn't meet on Wednesdays, and that's the reason he resigned. Yep, uh, that is a possibility. Friday. So if we're going back to the Friday, uh, yep. he may Understood. be about that opportunity. Do all committees have alternates? Yes. So we couldn't just have everybody be on the committee and expand our committee. We'd have to change the charter. That's a good retirement project. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 the question came up last time about alternates and, and their, their role. I reviewed the charter and I reviewed the board manual for Scarborough and there, I could find nothing that said there's an automatic move up. Right. Or that there's a requirement for a move up. So, but it could be yeah. an understanding among the committee. Well, but it's the town council. Yeah, yeah, that's point. So but we can make a recommendation. Oh yeah, yeah, we can make a recommendation. That's all. And that's what we have done. We 
We made the recommendation to move Robin to a voting member and we made a recommendation for Portia to become first chair. So we would need a second chair. Well, I thought we mentioned Rachel. And we did mention Rachel as well. Yes. But I think if she gets appointed in that position, I'm, I'd have to check to see if she can still be the um, representative from the planning board. Um, I, I believe if I am appointed, um, the it is the op I would believe that it's the option of the planning board if they wanted a second person. In other words, I, I would step back as the liaison, but I would still, but I would be an alternate. Um, and the planning board, I think, could decide that somebody else could be appointed as a liaison. We appoint yeah. liaisons every year in January. Yeah, um, and, and, so, and that's and that's fine. But I think we would also need you to physically apply to be on LERPEC. Already done. She has. So, and, and, and just right. to be clear, the, the, the liaison position doesn't require nominations and council approval. That no, just goes it straight just, it just correct. The, the planning board votes on it. Got it. Okay. it. Yep. All right. So at this oh, point, oh, I guess oh. we, uh, Autumn. Although I guess I, what? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Peter just asked about the liaison position, and my understanding from Marvin being appointed from long range planning to transportation. The appointments committee actually does make that final. Well, but are, are you the liaison to the transportation committee or you're on the transportation? Committee? No, I'm uh, on transportation. He's the, he's the oh, okay. Got it. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Got it. Got so there's it. the he, answer. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what that's all that. about is be, because I am chair of this board, I did not want to be the board liaison to transportation. So, Marvin said that he would like to do that. And so we're trying to move him to that position, but the, uh, uh, the uh, appointments committee has to move on that as well. So they have to rubber stamp that too. Gotcha, okay. Right. Yeah. That's sufficient. Yeah. All right, so I think the only thing we need at this point then is to ask Autumn if she would find a place for us to meet on the second Friday of the month. And that could be a floating target for a while. No problem. And as we, one request I would make for this committee member updates, um, we continue to see um, uh, home occupation special approval um, uh, for the zoning board. So as we move past the commercial standards, I'd ask that we start to prioritize some some of the, uh, the, the residential districts um, proposed changes as we come along here. Can you put that in layman's terms? What's the bottom line? So, in the residential and rural um, districts, uh, you you have a um, an, uh, most home occupations require a special exemption. Right. They're allowed, but they require an approval right. of the zoning board. I've, I've got one. I, I've yeah, exactly. So, right. so what we'd like to do is reduce the number of those going to the zoning board, so that we're not making the same decision over and over and over again. So, All right. Yeah. Can I suggest that you put that in writing, Peter, and send it to Autumn? Sure. Yeah. So that do. we don't so that we don't lose it. It's yeah. already on my whiteboard, Peter. So. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I, it was, uh, I would like to, if we can, if we we're, we're pretty much down to staff updates. Uh, Robin, if you need to leave, I thank you. I appreciate we understand. It. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, staff updates. The only thing we have our meeting in September. Uh, we will bring you a recap of this with what we've heard from the professional groups, and then we will start to take a look at environmental st standards as they refer to wetland uh, buffers. And it's going to be a coordinated effort between, so it's going to be sort of parallel. Conservation Commission is also seeing this, and so we'll sort of run them together until um, we get some consensus for ordinance. Will that just be wetland or will also be shoreland? Uh, we're not touching shoreland. So it'll just be wetland, rivers and streams, and then shoreland still applies in all of its glory. Um, but we're, we're adding some extra standards. And great example, disturbance up to five feet up to the wetland line 
clear cutting grading is allowed right now. Yeah. And so we're trying to make sure that that doesn't. Good. Continue. Appreciate it, Clary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if that's all set for staff, we'll move to, are there any member updates? Uh, I'd, I'd like to update on the, uh, the planning board, um, simply to say for the past three planning board meetings, we've prefaced those with workshops starting at, starting at six. Uh, and it's enabled us to take a better look at some of the ordinances coming before us or understanding certainly more about, for instance, about uh, stormwater and some of those measures that Angela is facing. And at this last one, we invited the uh, fire department folks to come and talk to us about fire safety, how they review applications. So we understand when it comes to us and it says fire department has uh, a question about X, Y, or Z. We understand the process they've gone through uh, and we can help reinforce their con concerns. So it was, the, the, the guys were wonderful. And um, later on after, the, actually after they had left, so I did send a, a message to the chief. One of our applicants complimented them on the work they had done, helping them through a, a thorny section uh, of access to a solar array. So um, it's been very helpful for us. We don't have any, additional ones scheduled yet until something else comes up. But um, it's been a way to inform the planning board of everything that's been going on. All right. Thanks, Rachel. Anyone else? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. May I ask a question? Is our next meeting Friday, September 8th? The second Friday. <laughs> this if that is the second Friday, yes. Thank yes. you. But location is TBD, right? At this point. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Mo uh, move to adjourn. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your uh, help with these items. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Enjoy the day. Yeah, you as well. How's your summer going, Peter? It's going really well.